Good afternoon. Among dispensational believers, there's a, a wing uh, that's developing called the Faith Works Wing, uh, dealing with salvation uh, in the Old Testament. And uh, it's, it's a pretty, uh, it's a dangerous wing uh, because it, it, uh, most adherents to it uh, are King James Bible believers. But they're very deceptive in how they approach the Word of God and uh, use the Word of God. And uh, they're preaching a false view of the es what essential points of dispensationalism is. Dispensationalism was never meant to deal with the issue of salvation, different, different dispensations. That was never the issue. The issue was understanding the differences in how the plan of God was unfolding, who was he speaking to, Gentiles, Jew, or church, uh, and these type of things uh, dealing with the plan of God. Dealing with particular points of differences in the uh, dispensations uh, was, was not the essence or the essential point of dispensationalism. But these guys have taken on to themselves, onto, onto themselves to say, oh, no, no this is, uh, we're, we're going to show you exactly that there's a faith work system set up, which really goes against the uh, essence of God, the attributes of God. And uh, they have no problem in twisting Scripture in order to make their point because they're dogmatic on this. They think that the, uh, the tribulation is a faith work system, and therefore they have, some, uh, they have some responsibility to warn tribulational saints that there's going to be a, uh, Satan's going to deceive them with the uh, eternal security issue. And go on more on that. But I'm read from Hoffman's work here on the, uh, uh, the dealing with the, uh, his footnotes, uh, dealing with Abraham and uh, also David. And this is uh, Romans 4. And this is one of the big issues is Romans 4 versus uh, James chapter 2. And they want you to, want you to think that uh, Abraham wasn't really saved until, he was, until, uh, until uh, James chapter 2, uh, where you see he was justified. And then in Romans 4, uh, he's uh, uh, justified initially, but then he has pro a progressive justification. Welcome backs, up, backs off on this and then just says, well, the faith is different, which of course is nonsense because the faith... Uh, our faith is supposed to be perfect, but our faith grows the same way uh, as the uh, uh, in the Old Testament. Different mechanics, you obviously with the Holy Spirit indwelling you. But the issue is is uh, uh, how they how they twist the scriptures in order to get their system, and that's the that's the important thing. They have a system in mind, and they're willing to bend the scriptures in order to get to it. So I'm going to read here. This is from his work. This is from his, his Bible, the uh, the common uh, the common the reference Bible. Common man, the uh, yeah, the common man's reference Bible. Excuse me. So here it is. He says Abraham's uh, imputed righteousness and justification are similar uh, to a New Testament Christian, but they're not identical. Now, remember, the whole issue in the Old Testament salvation is that they have a different object of faith. That their, their, their gospel, what they had to believe in, was different. But the results are going to be a, the same regarding their salvation. It was an event. It was a one-time event. They received imputed righteousness which justified them in the eyes of God, which means they were saved. The justification which appears before the eyes of man is progressive sanctification, which we also go through using a different method. We have the Holy Spirit inside us and, and uh, two natures and different, there are differences there. They use these differences to try to make some type of essential difference that they, these guys had, had a, some type of a progressive salvation as opposed to a salvation as a one-time event. So uh, you see here, he says here, Abraham received imputed righteousness by faith, but he was justified by works. Now the issue is, was he just, when he was justified by works, who was he justified uh, to? He was justified to men by his works, not to God. God saved him immediately. And, and Hopkins is going to say that. He's going to say it right here in, in this very footnote. A New Testament believer receives both simultaneously. No, we don't, we don't receive justification for men. We receive justification for God. See, there's two aspects of justification. That's what these guys want, want, want to avoid when they're talking about it. That there's a different aspect. And we've had the same aspect in the New Testament as in the Old Testament. We have to grow in grace so the world sees that we're justified before God. And it glorifies God. The record in James, uh, the record in James appears to contradict Paul's record. J James describes justification in the eyes of men. There's your works, but Paul described the justification in the eyes of God. So that means Abraham, his faith here, Abraham was justified 
at that point when he believed he was justified in the eyes of God by faith. He wasn't, he, you know, there was nothing, the, the justification that appeared in James was a progressive justification that followed after his immediate justification, which saved him uh, and sent him, would send him to Abraham's bosom. That's what saved him. And then the other part, which is justification for men, is what uh, was his walk, was his walk with the Lord. The doctrinal position reveals the two accounts, uh, are addressed to two different groups of people. No, they don't. And what it reveals is two different aspects of justification, which he just pointed out here. One is before men, and one is before God. The one is by faith is immediate. Now, what these guys want you to make, what, what have to have, try to get you to think is this. The Old Testament saint receives an impute, imputation of the justification, the, 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 the righteousness of God. And then he's not justified before God? That's ridiculous. The fact that he's receiving God's righteousness would make him automatically be justified because God would see his own righteousness and have to say justified. God could not deny or ignore his own righteousness when it's imputed. That is the fact of God's righteousness. That's why when he sees his righteousness, he has to say justified. That's what saves us. And just like in the Old Testament, they were saved by faith and have received the imputation of that righteousness. And then he says here, next page, David did not receive imputed righteousness. He's just talking about the passage here where it talks about in verse 6, verse 4, 6, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Now he's going to say that David did not receive imputed righteousness, which is crazy. If David couldn't have been saved without imputed righteousness. Now see, these same faith work guys, always talking about faith works, faith works, faith works. They always thought, when, when it comes down to their works, the issue of the, in the Old Testament and the law, they just throw the faith out. And they just want to deal with the works. And they deal with that in Ezekiel 18 and, and these other passages where they, we're dealing with the, the real son of the death type of thing. And they just throw out the faith. You know, faith doesn't show up in there anymore. And they want to talk, they want to say here, David was not, did not receive imputed righteousness. That was, the, but that, see that, if they accepted that, they could not, they could not throw out that they are, they are, they are, the, the, the correct view that salvation in every dispensation is a one-time event. It's based on the imputation of righteousness. Whatever they believed in, in the Old Testament, they had to believe in. It's not made very clear. In the New Testament, it is made very clear. We're supposed to believe in, in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, that, is, that he uh, uh, died for our sins on the cross and rose again from the dead. And we're trusting on him and his blood, shed blood for our salvation. That's a simple, clear aspect of, of uh, the gospel for us. The Old Testament isn't, isn't as clear. But they had to believe on something, and they were told what they had to believe in, and if they did, they received the imputation of that righteousness to God, and immediately they were justified. The justification later would appear before men. That's what James is talking about. That's what he's talking about, the growth. That's why Abraham would be called a friend of God, because he had a growth, he had an intimacy with God that appeared before men. And the same thing with David and, uh, the, uh, and, and any aspect of, uh, of a Christian, uh, the uh, Old Testament saint. That's what Hebrews 11 is talking about. The, 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 these men did their works, the things they did that appeared before men came from the faith that they had. That faith, same faith saved them and therefore they produced works that showed that faith. It isn't part of, it isn't part of their salvation, it's part of their, it's part of their growth, it was part of their, uh, their uh, glorifying God by what they did. So this is, this is uh, he goes on here also with Phineas. Uh, David pictures a born-again believer as a child of God, but he lived under the law. So what? So he lived under the law. Law told how, it was basically how a person supposed to walk. It had nothing to do with being, anybody being saved. And they told they both make an issue. Well, David played not to lose the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was given in the Old Testament for particular reasons. A king would get it, a prophet would get it, a priest would get it. In, in the Gospel of John, we see the uh, 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 Caiaphas uh, having it, and he was an unbeliever. So the fact is, is that the, not every individual in the, uh, in the we saw Samson getting it and losing him, losing the Holy Spirit, and then getting him back. The point is that the Holy Spirit in the Old, in the Old Testament is not was not the criteria of being saved. And not every individual was filled with the Holy Spirit or dwelt by the Holy Spirit uh, when he was saved at the point of salvation. 
And that's what these guys want to, you know, try to ignore. They want to ignore the fact that fact there's a difference in the Old Testament, New Testament, and that aspect is true. Our bodies become the temple of the Holy Spirit. That didn't happen in the Old Testament. So the fact when Paul was, was or when, James, when David was praying not to have the Holy Spirit removed from him, he was praying, praying to God, not for his salvation, to lose eternal salvation, but to lose the comfort that the Holy Spirit gave him and the power that the Holy Spirit gave him. But uh, then he talked about Phineas. Phineas uh, received the imputed righteousness when he executed judgment. Numbers 25, 7-8. Phineas did not get saved from what he did. Phineas received the righteousness which, uh, which was revealed. He had received a blessing. Uh, God gave him a covenant of peace uh, to all his, his, the rest of his generation after that. And that's what it talks about. The, 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 this blessings followed the generations because of what he did. Other, his, followed, his generations that would follow him would be blessed. You can't, you can't save other people by your own righteousness, but whatever you do. They all have to believe on their own. So we we found through Phineas uh, as if somehow he, what he did saved him. He was not saved by what he did. He was blessed. His he was blessed for what he did. So again, this is this is uh, a, a a growing movement that is distorting dispensational theology. It's a very dangerous movement again because they use the King James Bible, and uh, you see a number of guys on on YouTube, uh, and again uh, the Hoffman. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, Common Man's Reference Bible, which has very good notes in it. A lot of good stuff in this, in this uh, reference Bible. But again, he follows along with that, this, this nonsense of a, a faith work system uh, that uh, somehow makes salvation in the Old Testament a progressive aspect to it and not a one-time event. The Old Testament saint didn't have eternal security. He could lose it. Uh, and uh, therefore, you know, and, and they, of course, then they look for the tribulation and they say, you know, uh, these other things. And uh, th this creates a great deal of confusion what dispensationalism uh, really is. It's not about uh, discussing the issue of how these guys were saved and kept saved and your differences. It's because uh, the, 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 the essential point is the same, that you're saved by the imputation of, of God's righteousness uh, to you from faith, faith alone, and because of that, then God says you're justified. That's what sent the, the uh, Old Testament saints to Abraham's bosom until those sins were actually paid for. Uh, but this is a, a dangerous movement and because it's subtle and clever. You read these guys' works. They're always shifting their position, moving back and forth, leaving things out. Uh, you know, he, uh, Abraham was saved by justification. And, uh, you know, he was, but he, uh, he, you know, but justification uh, was, uh, it was really... Uh, uh, before men and James, but, and, but by faith but with God. Uh, well, if by faith with God, then you know, James, uh, uh, Abraham was saved immediately when he believed. That's when he was justified before God. Before men, later on, that's what that's the issue of justification. And that's the same for an, uh, a, a New Testament believer. Uh, he's immediately saved, justified before God by, <clears throat> by faith alone. And then, then his walk... He's justified before men. When men see uh, Christ formed in you, when they see Christ in you, uh, and uh, that, that's what justifies you before men when, uh, when uh, you glorify God in that aspect and you develop a walk, an intimate walk with God uh, uh, and uh, Jesus Christ grows in you where people don't see you anymore, but they see Christ formed in you. But so again, uh, this is a very dangerous aspect of the uh, that's growing in the dispensational movement, and it needs to be exposed because it creates a confusion in, in salvation. And these guys have no qualms in contradicting themselves in their own footnotes and their own and discussions because they have an idea that system a system is set up, and now they've got to fit the scriptures to match their system. Dispensationalism was never meant to be complex. It was it, the Bible clearly unfolds a dispensational theology. Uh, and uh, it's very clear when you read, read through it that, that different people are being spoken to, but it was never meant to understand the idea that somehow that God deals uh, that uh, salvation would not be an event, a one-time event, and that God wouldn't keep people saved once he got them saved, and they've been, uh, they received the imputation of, their, of, of God's righteousness by faith. Uh, that is always, always, for every dispensation, the issue of uh, getting saved once you're born, uh, as, as uh, you know, with, uh, through, uh, through Adam, there's no other way. 
So the idea David didn't receive imputed righteousness is, 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 uh, is crazy. That means he wouldn't be saved. Uh, and uh, this is what you get, though. And so when you read these guys, you'll see them subtly changing positions, always, always moving back and forth, uh, and ignoring, ignoring the scriptures that clearly contradict their position because they have it in their mind that, uh, uh, based on a, a, a few verses in, uh, in the tribulation, that uh, that the, a faith work system and the, you know the, the, the general epistles are for uh, are for tribulational martyrs, tribulational uh, tri tribulational saints, not not the church. Based on this, they now develop the whole system of theology that contradicts uh, how God saves people in every dispensation. Amen. Thank you.